What's up everybody, Tindo here, and look at this giant stack of games that I'm hiding behind. Today was for sure our biggest shopping day while we were on our Thanksgiving thrifting adventure. And uh, I'm very excited to tell you what's in here, but first, if you would, go check out our merch store. I'm wearing my Shark Thrift shirt for the first time today. It fits good. We've even got sizes for big guys. So if you're interested in getting your own Shark Thrift shirt, go over to TindoStore.com and check it out. But also, do this. Stick around, go to the thrift stores with me, and then we'll come back here and we'll talk about everything that I got. Check this out. Before we get started on today's episode, I want to talk about something real quick. I want you guys to comment below and let me know if you ever do any thrifting or game hunting while traveling. Do you ever go on holidays and wherever you regularly travel to see family, etc.? Do you ever thrift there? Do you ever get excited about stores that are in that area that you only get to visit ever so often? Well, I asked this question today because, of course, we're traveling for holidays and we are in Kentucky and there's a set of bookstores here that are a lot like my Zia Records are back home. Honestly, they're almost identical in a lot of ways, and I would have never went to these stores had someone not told me, hey, while you're traveling, you should definitely check out this store. They have a bottom dollar section. I know how you like that, and uh, yeah, now every time I travel to Kentucky, I am definitely going to be looking forward to hitting up these stores again. So what about you? Do you have stores like that that are somewhere else other than where you live that you look forward to going to once, twice a year? Let me know in the comments below. But let's jump into this Goodwill. To be completely honest, I'm really not finding much. If you have really been watching my hands, I've only come across a couple of games in all of these DVDs. And to be honest further, the Goodwills here in Lexington and up north of Kentucky and Indiana, just a little bit of ways away from here, the Goodwills haven't been great. They haven't been the worst, but they haven't been great. And, I, you know, I'm definitely going to have to come back again and shop all these Goodwills again in a different season one of these days just to see if it's a little bit different. Maybe I'm just here during a bad time of year, so I can't make any overall judgment as to the quality of these Goodwills. But I'm not really sure if I feel any more satisfied as when I did when we traveled to my hometown, which is further west in Kentucky, and did game shopping, game hunting there. I don't know, maybe some of you will have to go back and rewatch that last travel series we did and compare it to this one and maybe try to make a judgment on which one of them went better. I don't know. I think the other one was just a little bit better in terms of quality of games, but I might. I don't know. I haven't counted them yet. It definitely seems like more as far as quantity goes, but uh, we'll have to make that final judgment maybe in the recap episode of this trip that we're going to have to do really soon. But I am going to go ahead and leave with maybe a sports title from here. Not really much else. I almost left with this flash mask. I have a large collection of movie and comic book helmets and masks. And I'm very proud of that collection. And that flash mask would have been really cool to add to it. But it was missing its earpieces. And I maybe could have fabricated replacement earpieces or 3D printed them or something. But I'm not looking for more work. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it behind. And maybe I'll get lucky at the bins one of these days and find that mask again. This next Goodwill stop is probably the smallest Goodwill I've ever been in. Try to take a look around whenever we're in here and see what you think. Do you have a smaller Goodwill where you're at? This bad boy it's pretty small. It's definitely smaller than any Goodwill in Phoenix. And it's definitely the smallest one we've been in here. Not a lot of room at all. And honestly, the state of the video games on these shelves is pretty much exactly what it looked like at the last couple of Goodwill stops that we've made while on this trip. There's just mostly movies, a few CDs, and if you're lucky, there will be a video game or two tucked in the DVDs and CDs. And I pretty much looked through here five or six times because honestly, when I don't find anything at a Goodwill, or I, if I don't see anything interesting at all, I just end up not putting those stops into episodes. Uh, I, I do put them in if I don't buy anything, if there is like really cool stuff that I don't buy. But more often than not, those stops don't end up in the episode. So I really wanted to put this in the episode because it was the last stop, and I didn't really want to make a shorter episode. So I kept digging to make sure I didn't miss anything. And honestly, all I'm going to leave with is a Wii American Idol game. Really not much at all. And you may or may not have spotted them, but there was a couple Pokemon books for Pokemon cards down at the bottom of that last shot, and they didn't have any cards in them, or I would have bought them, and that probably would have been fine of the day at this point, but 
they were just empty binders, which I also still would have kind of wanted, but it was just something I wasn't willing to pay the money for and to take on the plane. But I did take a look around the rest of the store, and really there were some interesting toys, but nothing I was leaving with. Now we're moving on to what we've all been waiting for, Half Price Books. This is basically Kentucky's version of Zia Records. If you're familiar with my channel, you know there's a store back home called Zia Records that I frequent sometimes daily. I really didn't spend enough time in the store to really compare prices because my favorite thing about Zia Records back home is the prices. It's just always, this stuff is just always cheaper. But the thing that will compare really well about this store to Zia Records back home is their markdown section, which I'll get to here in just a moment. But here is the regular game section. There's a lot of good stuff. There are tons of good N64 games all around. I believe those particular Yu-Gi-Oh games there were actually PC games. I got excited when I saw them because I'm pretty big on collecting Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. I'm, I was a big fan when I was younger, still am. I don't really play the card game anymore, but uh, I just I love me some Yu-Gi-Oh. Very nostalgic for it. But the rest of this stuff, they had just tons of cool things packed in here. Some cheap stuff, some expensive stuff, plenty to look at, even though the gaming section wasn't big at all. It's probably six feet by four feet. And that was it. Some lock boxes and a few loose things. The prices on the Skylanders were pretty good, but that was another one of those things I wasn't going to buy and try to pack home. They'd probably get damaged in my bag the way it's currently packed. But the games in the lockbox were all pretty good. There was some stuff Patrick was like, man, I'm thinking about buying this. But I didn't end up buying anything from the regular part of the game section. Honestly, at this exact moment, I was getting just a little bit nervous because I had such high hopes for this store because of how a couple people over the Discord told me that I just had to go here and their bottom dollar section was awesome. Well, you might remember yesterday we went to a different location of this store, and in the clearance section, I found one small thing that was video game related, and that was it. Well, I walked over here, and right off the bat, it kind of looked the exact same as the other store's bottom dollar location. Lots of interesting stuff, but no video games yet until I spotted some of this stuff hanging here. It's all just peripherals and cables and like there's a Vita slip cover, which is pretty cool. And there was a really cheap NES controller, but none of this was stuff that I was going to get excited about. And finally, after a little bit closer inspection, I saw that this lady was standing here looking at the video games and this is where they all were. So I was like, okay, great. These are all clearance video games. This ought to be good as long as the prices are good. And I start digging through all of it, and all of a sudden I realize that there is not a single game on this shelf that isn't a dollar. Everything. A dollar. A dollar. Look at these Dreamcast games. Right off the bat, a dollar. Now, why is all this stuff so cheap? Well, it's a little bit tricky. Some of this stuff, if you open it up, the discs are in there upside down because there's a scratch on it. And they want you to know before buying it, you're buying a damaged disc that they deemed to be below their threshold for quality. So... That's okay. Some of this stuff uh, might still work despite its scratches. It might be a little bit of a gamble, but also a lot of this is marked down because it just didn't sell. So, you know, it was just stuff nobody wanted. And then, of course, some of it might be missing its manuals, etc., etc., etc. So, I'm going to go through every single game on this shelf, every game that's a dollar. And if I don't have it, I'm pretty much going to buy it unless it's just destroyed on the inside. But I didn't really find a lot of that. Pretty much everything I came across that I didn't have, I found in perfectly good condition. Honestly, a lot of it was in better condition than I would buy at the thrift store. Sometimes my threshold at the thrift store is pretty low because stuff is so cheap there. So I'm going to end up leaving today with quite a few PlayStation 2 games and a surprising number of GameCube games. There were also quite a few gaming manuals here and these Guinness World Record books, which I am collecting, and there were several editions here that I didn't have. But this was all stuff, once again, that was just going to make my bag way too heavy to go on the airplane. They have a 50-pound weight limit, and I was right up on it when I checked in with the games that I have at 49 pounds. So even one of these books would have put me over the weight limit. So I'm glad that I didn't buy them. But man, I can't wait to come back here with a car and go home with all of this stuff. All right, guys, we've got a ton of stuff to run through today, so I'm going to run straight through it. If you happen to see anything in here that is a favorite game of yours, definitely comment below. Let me know why I should play it, and maybe I'll give it a try. There's a lot of stuff here. There's some stuff at the bottom that I'm really getting to get home and actually play. So first up, a Greatest Hits edition of Naruto. Uzumaki Chronicles. I'm going to butcher some of these names. Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. Mind you, 
everything in this stack today was a dollar. So that was actually a double. I just, I couldn't leave it for a dollar. So I went ahead and got it. Future Tactics, The Uprising, a dollar. Shrek 2 for the GameCube, Greatest Hits, a dollar. Karaoke Revolution Party for the GameCube, yes, thank you. NHL 2004 for the GameCube. I got a good amount of GameCube stuff today. Gun for the Xbox. Madden 2002 for the PS2. I gotta look closely at some of these because there's a <laughs> there's a lot of GameCube and a lot of PS2 stuff. Tekken Tag Tournament, very nice for the PS2. Uh, World Series Poker, which is kind of funny. It's 2007 edition. I have this for every console except for the Wii. So finally got all those poker games out of the way. Splashdown for the PS2. Madden 07 for the GameCube. And then this was kind of funny. Karaoke Revolution. Presents American Idol for the Wii. I also have this for every console except for the Wii. FIFA Soccer 13. Would not be a Tendo Adventure without a copy of Wii Fit. Snag one of those a day. Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. Yep, but another Ghost Recon game that I didn't have. A series of unfortunate events for the PS2. Fantastic Four for the GameCube. This one was good because I've been dancing around buying this one because every time I find it, it's four or five bucks. But today, we got it for a dollar. Finding Nemo Player's Choice. This was good because I didn't have the Player's Choice Edition, so not bad for a dollar. Dragon Ball Z Sagas. I have this for the GameCube, but did not have it for the Xbox. So very nice. Wolverine's Revenge. Had it for PS2, but did not have it for the GameCube. Battle for the Pacific. Let's go, PS3. And this, you guys watching might know a little bit more about this than I do, so if you do, let me know. I think this is just a DVD, it's just a movie, some sort of prequel, I don't know if it's a movie TV show type thing to set up San Andreas, or if it's maybe some sort of behind the scenes making of the game, I don't know. But let me know if you do know, but at any rate, I love me some Grand Theft Auto, and definitely need a Grand Theft Auto shelf in the game room, so that was a cool buy. Madden 2004 for the GameCube. I love filling in these holes for the GameCube. This was a really cool buy because yesterday's episode, go back and watch it if you haven't, I bought my first Xbox 360 demo disc. And then here today, I bought another one. These are awesome, I want more of these. I want as many of these as I can get. Number 90, that's up there. Definitely the highest number I have. I was very happy about that. I was very happy about a hockey GameCube game that I didn't have. And then we get into, well, let's get this out of the way. I don't know anything about this game, but it looks all right. Shattered Union for the Xbox. But then look at this. <laughs> Yesterday's episode, I was all excited because I got four PlayStation 1 games in one day. And uh, I really shouldn't have celebrated that because today I really deserve celebration because I got four Sega Dreamcast games. I, I'm speechless right now. I can't even I can't even say the words Dreamcast. This is exciting because I think back home in the game room I have two Sega Dreamcast games. Two. And I just got four more. I couldn't be more excited. And it's all pretty good stuff. It's all stuff that like I'll definitely well three out of four. Three out of four ain't bad. Let's start with the one I probably won't play much. Sega Bass Fishing. Very nice. And then WWF Attitude, get it. I have this on some other consoles, but it's pretty sweet to have it on Dreamcast. And then Sega Rally Championships. Nice. A Dreamcast racing game. And last and certainly not least, South Park Rally. A South Park racing game on the Dreamcast. You better believe I will be playing this. I'll be playing it soon too, because right as soon as I get done, uh, shooting this video and editing it real quick we're actually gonna head to the airport it's time to fly home so uh, the next video if not the one after next you should see me back home in Phoenix I'm very excited to go home me and Patrick both get back into our regular schedule our regular posting schedule I'm definitely excited to get home and get back to my regular editing schedule I've been editing all hours of the night here whereas I normally get up nowadays and do it early in the morning but uh, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to get this stupid stack of video games home. You should see it. You should see my uh, huge bag full of uh, video games. It's a mess. 
But that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Now, before you go, run over to our merch store, check it out. Check out the Shark Thrift shirt. If you don't like the Shark Thrift shirt, maybe you'll like the Tindo shirt. We've definitely sold way more of the Tindo shirts so far than the Shark Thrift shirts. That's fine. I don't care if we never sell a Shark Thrift shirt. The Tindo shirts are pretty sweet. Uh, but go check it out. We're selling some sticker decals of our logos as well. If you're into that kind of thing, TindoStore.com. Also, before you go, go join our Discord. All right? Our Discord is a place where we chat about video games. I show some behind the scenes stuff uh, that we do on the channel. And it's really the easiest way to get in touch with me if you'd like to have a little chatty chat over on the Discord. The link is below. Also, if you joined the Discord a while back and you haven't been around lately, come on back around. We actually got a moderator. We have an administrator moderator over on the Discord now because that's how much it's blowing up. There's so many people. We actually had to hire someone to keep an eyeball on it because stuff was getting crazy. So it's a little less crazy now. Come on over and hang out. Come on back and hang out if you haven't been around in a while. It's a good time over on the Discord. Here on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button. We are dangerously close to getting to a thousand subs. We're gonna, we might get there before the year's over, but if not, directly after. So if you're watching, sub. And then everybody make sure your notifications are turned on. Ring the bell because that's how you get notifications as soon as we post a video. So hit the notification bell and then when I post a video in the future, you'll get a notification and you come back and we can hang out then. Until then guys, peace out.